Hey, what's up guys? I'm KBHD here. So CES is always a pretty all over the place, usually pretty wild show. This year, I actually think was better than most. There was a lot of interesting stuff floating around. I walked around on the show floor for many, many hours, saw a bunch of stuff, pointed cameras at it so you don't have to. This is the best of what I saw. So a lot of people have asked me what was the best part, what's the best thing at this year's show. And to those people I've been saying, the Sony car, which I think was the biggest surprise that no one saw coming. So I'll start there. So Sony had a car in their booth and hot take, I think it looks better than almost every other electric car or any other car out there and better than a lot of the cars on the streets today. But before we get too excited, no, this is not a car that they plan on shipping or letting real people buy and drive, at least right now. What they've done here really is put together a one-off prototype car that's a demonstration of all the different technologies Sony makes that they feel they're kind of already in the automotive business. So you see Sony does a lot of stuff. They make camera sensors and they're Sony Alpha cameras. So this car has rear facing cameras instead of rear view mirrors. There's radar and LiDAR sensors, which are all needed for self-driving, computer systems, and the interior that I didn't get to play with had a massive display and a UI that also all seemed to work fairly well, which makes sense because Sony also makes computers and smartphones too. Then the rest of the car stuff, like brakes and tires and things like that, they had help from a company called Magna to build it out, and that's how they ended up with a fully functioning working car. So I asked about specs, and I was told quad motors, zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds and a top speed of 149 miles an hour. Not that these specs actually matter because you can't actually get one. But I was really most impressed by the design and that's why I want it to be so real. It had some Tesla and some Porsche lines, like a nice hybrid between the two of them. The whole thing was this satin silver, so no ugly glossy paint with fingerprints or anything like that. And it also helps that it was lit really well. So yeah, Sony came to CES People were expecting maybe a PS5, but they would be silly to waste a PS5 announcement at CES. So we got a car. You know what might've caused even more confusion to me though? Samsung's new phones. So for the first time, they actually showed in their booth what I mentioned in the last video, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite and the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite. Now, since we already have Galaxy S10e, I was confused. So I asked the Samsung reps that were at the booth, are these flagships? And their answer was, well, no, these are light flagships. So take that for what it's worth. So these phones both have a 6.7 inch 1080p flat OLED displays with the selfie camera cut out in the top middle. They both have 4,500 milliamp hour batteries, but no wireless charging. And they run a Snapdragon 855 in the S10 Lite and a similar Exynos 9810 in the Note 10 Lite. And they both have this new rectangular camera bump on the back that we're expecting as a design in the new flagships in a couple weeks. Although the camera situations are slightly different on each of them. The Note 10 Lite has three 12 megapixel cameras, a wide, a 2X telephoto, and an ultra wide, simple enough. But then the S10 Lite has a 48 megapixel main camera with super steady shot video, then a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a five megapixel macro camera. And then Note 10 Lite also adds the stylus, of course, and a headphone jack, but it's the only one not coming to the United States. So why exactly do these phones now exist? Like, I guess you could ask that about a lot of things at CES, but to me it's confusing because Samsung already has some pretty great mid-range phones in their lineup, like the A51 and the A71. But either way, these will slot in around, I've been told, the $650 range, and they'll tide us over until we do get that Galaxy S20 and Galaxy Fold 2. Then OnePlus showed a concept phone at CES, the OnePlus Concept One with electrochromatic tinting glass on the back of the phone that can both hide the ugly camera bumps of the future and act as ND, neutral density filters, for photos and videos. I did an entire separate video on this concept phone, so if you wanna check that out, link right below that like button. It's a good one. And they also brought to CES an entire piano made of OnePlus 7T Pros, all smartphones. Okay, then I saw not just one, but two different rotating TVs on the show floor at CES this year. One from TCL with these rounded corners to match a typical smartphone display and one from Samsung called the Samsung Cero 
basically the idea here is we do so much streaming and content viewing from our smartphone that we might as well have our TVs rotate between portrait and landscape to appropriately frame the content we're watching without black bars, depending on your smartphone orientation, which I, I guess makes sense. Or we could just stop shooting so much vertical video. Uh, anyway, I also saw, uh, I stopped by the Bosch booth quickly, where I also was treated to a pretty interesting surprise, which was an LED activated sun visor for a car. Basically this entire rig is just a camera somewhere in the front of a car doing face tracking, and then the clear panel in front of your face will block out the sun, but still leave other areas you need to see, like the road and the traffic light you're stopped at, things like that. And it worked pretty well, not perfectly, but it kept my face and eyes shaded, tracked, which was cool, and then I could see other things. Okay, cars. So there were a lot of cars, just like there are at every CES, and there was one pretty wild Mercedes one that I wanted to see, but I didn't. But that was apparently out in the streets and driving around. It didn't even really look street legal or real. Uh, I fully didn't expect this to be a real car, but I did see two real electric cars that I think coming up are gonna be, well, probably pretty interesting autofocus episodes. So the Ford Mustang Mach-E is one of them. So the electric SUV Mustang, it was there, and I gotta say, I'm not a Mustang person, obviously, but this one here in the blue did look better in person than a lot of the Mach-E's I've seen in videos and photos. It's a pretty normal size, like a Honda CRV type of crossover size, and it has a lot of cameras all over the place, a lot of sensors, but overall, it looks pretty finished, looked pretty complete here. I'm rooting for it, though. I'm glad Ford is making this move. Now, right now, it's scheduled for 2021, so there is some waiting to do, and it'll probably be at CES again next year before it even comes out. Um, but yeah, the Ford Mustang Mach-E was there. And then so was the Rivian R1T pickup truck, also in blue. And it was also sitting in their booth looking pretty complete as well. And this one's scheduled to come out this year, 2020. And I was told by them they wanna start hitting the road with these around summer and delivering them to buyers by this winter. So this is another one of the more promising electric cars that's definitely coming out. Then there were a lot of robots at CES but still, again, none of them were quite as cool as the Omron ping pong playing robot that I got to rematch with this year. So this year, the giant ping pong instruction robot, which is just a combination of Omron's technologies, again, used as a showcase, but not actually for sale. This one will not just keep track of how well you're hitting the ball back to the robot, but also how your emotions factor in. So there's new cameras and things keeping track of how much you smile versus how much you frown and it's sort of trying to sense if I get frustrated or unhappy with something, and it'll do that less, but still help me work on my game, which I thought was hilarious, and it was all shown on the display live as we were playing. Really fun stuff. And then some other little things, Razer had a Tomahawk mini PC, where thanks to an Intel NUC compute unit and a special case and motherboard setup and tiny power supply, the entire computer is really small. It's the size of basically a large external GPU enclosure. You could fit the whole thing in a shoebox if you wanted to. Fascinating, but I don't see that being super useful to me. Still cool to see. And then I tried a racing simulator in the Razer booth that was essentially fully suspended off the ground with a realistic steering wheel, paddle shifters, a gas and a brake and a clutch pedal, and dual projectors for full immersion. And the most immersive part for me was the seat belt pulling against my chest when I slammed against the brakes, which was wild. And then I'll say it looks like Samsung did finally make a TV with no bezels. And I don't just mean thin bezels. I mean, literally, seems like this is just basically a 100% screen to body ratio. No idea if they're actually going to be able to ship this one or not, but if they do, I'm here for it. I really want it. So overall, CES takeaways for me this year were number one, 4K is still on the rise and it's not everywhere yet, and 8K is now that new stretch. I will say electric cars are coming, and they're coming up quick. And you can put Alexa in pretty much anything. CES is still fun, and it's still home to all the craziest, wildest gadgets in the world for a week in Las Vegas, and I'm glad we made it out here. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.